Hey everyone, welcome to the industry show. I'm your host, Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Yamika Mehra. Yamika, welcome on the show. Thank you so much, Nitin. Absolute pleasure to be on the show and look forward to an interesting, very interesting conversation. Pleasure is all ours. So let's start with a big question. Who is Yamika? So, I mean, I get asked this question very often these days. Uh, and uh, my first answer for the past six years has been that I'm a mother. So yeah. I'm a mother first. And that, you know, brings a couple of things to me. Uh, you know, someone who naturally nourishes or nurtures uh, people and things around her and, uh, you know, who's looking or uh, looking at a goal basically to achieve in terms of shaping people, shaping personalities, mm -hmm. shaping businesses. So that's, that's who I am. That's such an important and crucial perspective to have, especially as a founder. Uh, who's dealing with two sides of a very important ecosystem, founders and investors. So with that in mind, tell us more about what is FAVC and uh, the mission, the vision, uh, and then I have a couple more questions around that. Okay, perfect. So I'll actually continue uh, answering the previous question before jumping sure. onto this. Sure. So, I mean, I took a very emotional shot at that uh, first question. Uh, but uh, while, uh, I mean, yes, in my personal life, I'm a mother and I continue, continue to be so in my professional life as well because I work with a lot of founders mm -hmm. uh, at FAVC. Uh, FAVC is India's largest venture builder. I'm a partner at FAVC. And uh, we start working with founders uh, right when they are at an idea stage. So when it is a seed uh, in their heads, that's when we start interacting and working with them. And, you know, it requires a lot of nurturing. It requires a lot of work to convert those ideas into uh, actual products uh, that are in the market, that are doing traction, and so on and so forth. So that's that's what we do at FAVC. Uh, venture building in the truest sense, uh, onboarding startups, onboarding founders at such an early stage, and then uh, you know taking them through uh, everything that it takes to build a startup, whether it is brand positioning, whether it is product development, whether it is uh, growth and of course whatever fundraising is required take them from that point a to point b all of that uh, we do as FAVC, co-ideating co-building and co-investing with the founders so that's that's what we do at FAVC. we've been at it for about two and a half three years now have about 25 startups on the portfolio uh so, you know, there's a playbook that we follow. Uh, I mean, I won't say ensuring, but with the intent of preventing these very early stage founders falling off the grid somewhere in that journey from idea to product and traction. So that's the whole idea to bring down the risk, which is typically associated with early stage startups okay. for all stakeholders involved. So whether it is founders, uh, whether it is, you know, uh, angel investors, whether it is us, we're trying to bring down the risk for all the stakeholders involved uh, in the early stage uh, journey of a startup. So in essence, that's what we do at First Check uh, and FAVC. So I think uh, uh, Nitni also uh, mentioned uh, what First Check does. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, as the, I mean, if you hear the name, sounds like, uh, sounds financial, mm -hmm. sounds like uh, money. I mean, it is what it sounds like, uh, but it is, so it is, First Check is an angel network of about 3000 odd people. 95% of those people are first time angels. Uh, but First Check is not a pure play angel investor network. Uh, first check is very much a part of FAFC and you know just about uh, one of the things 
which becomes part of the end to end venture building process while building a startup so while a startup is being built what is uh, important for us in the first place is to evaluate the idea thoroughly to evaluate the business model thoroughly to evaluate the founder market fit thoroughly before you know de- deciding whether or not to start venture building uh, a particular idea and that you know this evaluation etc gives way to our thesis so why are we onboarding a particular startup why are we going forward uh, with venture building it mm-hmm. so uh, what it does is uh, while it gives us a thesis we want to test that thesis so what we do is we put it in front of our network of angels and uh, if they are ready to back it with some money that's when we are uh, you know absolutely comfortable to go ahead and embark on the venture building journey so that's what uh, first check uh, you know takes care of and uh, that's how it is uh, ingrained in the end to end journey of venture building that we take care of at vc makes sense it takes a village to raise a child and a startup and i see you put that village together really nicely and you're nurturing it so tell us why do this and and why do this now right uh so nitin i mean i'm sure uh, people are hearing uh, great stories about the indian startup ecosystem mm-hmm. these days i mean in 7 8 10 years uh, startups have reached ipo levels in india mm-hmm. and you know there's a lot of uh, whole lot of funds that are flowing in you hear the biggies of the vc ecosystem come in and you know make these big bets etc but that's just on the surface i mean if you look deeper you'll see that all of that is just on the surface and it's a very very minuscule percentage mm-hmm. of uh, you know activity that gets uh, noticed via media etc etc uh but you know we all know that when these things happen i mean this is of course good so anything that gets talked about uh, is good because then a more number of people get to know about it more number of people would uh, try to take a shot at it mm-hmm. and that's what's happening uh, in india today where you know more and more people are becoming cognizant to the fact that they they can begin a business they can begin a startup and they can work on it and they can succeed at it okay. at least that's the hope uh, but obviously uh, the path to building a successful startup is difficult you are literally uh, building something from scratch and you know you're hoping to take it to greater and greater heights so of course it requires a lot of support and uh, when there isn't uh, that kind of support available uh, things falter and people falter uh, companies fall down there are failures which anyways would be there but uh, because it's unavoidable when you're trying large number of people are trying something uh, there are you know failures become unavoidable but uh, you know the best ones shouldn't uh, fail for lack of support uh, that's the kind of idea that we had when we started working as a venture builder so we are possibly the first and the only and the largest venture builder in the indian startup ecosystem mm-hmm. uh because uh, what the indian startup ecosystem has and i mean no offense kudos to what it has it has a good number of incubators and accelerators mm-hmm. that work on a mentorship driven advisory model uh it has a good number of angel networks today that you know help uh young founders get their initial checks uh for building up their businesses but sometimes you know just advice from afar or uh, just a check in the bank is not enough i mean i am saying sometimes but that's what the case is in okay. 99% of the cases it's not enough uh you know to avoid the pitfalls that come with the early journey so that's where a venture builder plays its role and we specifically aim to work with non tech founders 
I mean, I mean, I don't know. You must have heard, or our audience must have heard of instances where you know a majority of the fundings in India go to founders from IIT and IIM and you know tech founders who can build a tech product, etc. But we realize there's a huge gap in terms of helping the non-tech founders who are great at their business, know their domain. Uh, know how to sell, how to build a business from scratch, but maybe don't know how to do it with a digital tech product startup, mm-hmm. which of course is highly scalable and uh, and you know you can uh, build a recurring revenue model around it, and that's how uh, you scale exponentially with a startup. But uh, the the non tech founder doesn't know how to do it. So we have a very strong thesis of working with these non tech founders. Mm-hmm. who are looking to uh, you know build a digital tech product startup and we work with them and we support them with uh, you know, everything that it takes to go from idea to product to traction to further growth so that's a lot of how sense. we do things yeah so tell me as a venture builder and as a community of investors what is the biggest challenge you're facing as a business? Uh, so, I mean, uh, as it would seem, uh, the job that we're doing is not easy. Okay. It's difficult uh, because, you know, it's easy to, uh, you know, just identify startups and founders that are doing well and, you know, offer them a, a check or offer them some advice. I mean, I won't say it's easy, but it's easier. Sure. But it is definitely very difficult to a identify uh, startups and founders at an idea stage and to be able to, uh, you know, see clearly that where what is the kind of potential that this idea or this founder can have in the next four or five years. So you know we are literally uh, visualizing it way ahead in their life cycle, and then to. Uh, maintain the kind of discipline that is required to take the startup from that idea kind of stage uh, and to you know have that kind of understanding with the founding team with our teams and to take them to uh, you know the product traction vc ready kind of stage that's the uh, most difficult part of uh, this journey uh, because you know, uh, you you do get uh, people who are uh, looking to back the ideas with money, etc. So if I talk about investors, if I talk about uh, funds for doing something, that's still available. Uh, but what is difficult is to uh, handhold the startups, these founders, and prevent them from falling off the grid uh, somewhere in that initial journey. Uh, that is uh, difficult and uh, it took us some time to uh, fine tune our playbooks uh, so that you know we can minimize this so you know while we say that you know for the way we are working we are mitigating risks and uh, you know we are we are hand holding and all of that even we are not able to eliminate risk which is associated with you know this asset class startups as an asset class and even we are uh, only aiming for you know maybe a 30 to 40 percent success out of our entire portfolio just for context the industry average is five percent okay. so, but i mean even we are only aiming at uh, 30 to 40 percent success on the flip side of this challenge is the opportunity what's the one most exciting opportunity that makes you get up and and take on all of these challenges you face. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, more than opportunity, it is uh, what motivates us is uh, the section of people that we are uh, helping or the Mm -hmm. section of people that are getting inspired or motivated with whatever we are doing. And uh, here I'd like to highlight that there are actually two sections of people that are that we are working with. One is, of course, these young founders. Mm-hmm. And when I say young, 
I actually mean young in their uh, startup building journeys. Mm-hmm. I mean, not necessarily uh, as for their age. So these uh, founders who are wanting to uh, begin their uh, startup journeys, etc., they are the first lot who is, uh, you know, uh, I would like to believe that learning from uh, whatever we are doing, whether it is with us on our uh, venture building journey or even outside of it. Because, you know, when you're building something, you obviously are able to affect a larger uh, number of people with whatever you're doing. And the other set of audience that we are able to work with and make a part of this ecosystem are new angel investors. People who are looking to begin their angel investment journeys, who don't have a very big purpose, yet are looking to build a diversified portfolio, get a taste of uh, you know this asset class. Because traditionally, uh, angel investing has been touted as something that you know only the HNIs can do. Uh, because it requires that kind of corpus, it requires that kind of patience, and that it requires that kind of understanding of the ecosystem. So that's the mold that we are trying to, you know, change, especially with first check. Uh, and uh, so that really uh, is the opportunity to involve uh, this new set of people into this asset class, which is unexplored and uh, unlock the true potential that lies within. I mean, imagine, you know, so many people on one side uh, that are getting inspired to get up, start up, build their own businesses, and the other set of people who maybe are not building those businesses directly, but are contributing to it. Uh, So, you know, the kind of potentials this kind of synergy can unlock is immense. So, I mean... It, it just it's very motivating it's very inspiring and that's the opportunity that we are motivating Stay inspiring happy. and exciting happy. to be at the crux of all of this so really happy for you and the the volumes you have achieved speak to the impact you've been able to create let's you know as we look forward at the opportunity let's look back a little bit in your own career and i'm interested and curious to know about a moment in time when things did not work out as you had expected. Mm. That's interesting. Uh, so let me give you a, a glimpse of very quick glimpse of what my professional journey has been so far. Mm-hmm. So I have today some 15 plus years of experience, professional experience, uh, which I'm very happy to say is mostly in and around startups, mm-hmm. but it did not start here. So, you know, I'm a B.Tech computer science graduate, uh, graduated out of college and joined this uh, MNC. And, uh, you know, I was uh, sitting in front of computers and I was uh, coding, etc. And that was something that I was like, I'm not enjoying this. I would like to sit in front of people. I would want to interact with people rather than machines. So, you know, a few years into the job, I got up and I said that, you know, I want to move towards sales and business development where, you know, there's more people interaction. Mm -hmm. It was difficult, but I managed to uh, get my way around. And then I also managed to be, uh, you know, hired by this data analytics product platform as their first sales hire. And, you know, uh, it was very interesting because they had just launched in India and uh, everything had to be started from scratch it was a huge responsibility Uh, i just put my head down for the next five six years and we just worked ground up and it is very interesting uh, as to how much can you learn while you're actually doing things so i mean i was someone with no educational background in you know selling or anything of, of that sort and, or marketing for that matter. Uh, and, you know, when you are in a startup, you're wearing so many different hats all the time. So that really shaped uh, whatever I know about uh, building businesses today. And uh, after doing that for five, six years, I was like, you know, enough of this. Now I have done this. Let me now start something of my own. And that actually, uh, when I tell you, would be the time when, you know, I was... L- it really, things did not turn out the way I had planned them to. And that's something that, you know, I keep telling to a lot of new founders as well. 
that you know you you should try it may not work out and sometimes it will uh, but you have to try and you have to you know keep uh, pivoting so what i did i i left this uh, sales job that i was in and i uh, started off a <laughs> blockchain product startup uh, mm-hmm. this was some time back uh, blockchain enterprise products really did not have an adoption especially in india but we wanted to give it a try and we tried uh, for about a year we built a team of about 20 people and we won some awards for you know whatever we had uh, conceptualized uh, that we were wanting to do etc but sadly we weren't able to uh, inspire the uh, enterprise leaders to get into blockchain products just yet so we had to give up that dream because you know after the point of time you've got these people on your team you have to pay their salaries etc you got to get business uh, and you know we couldn't pursue the entire blockchain product thing and uh, that's where you know i thought that you know this isn't working maybe it was a bad decision to you know leave a job and start up and all those things uh, uh, but then uh, you know something interesting happened so while we were building this uh, blockchain product uh, one of the family offices had approached us for for uh, funding us mm-hmm. but you know we weren't sure of uh, where this product is really going and uh, what's happening with it so we were skeptical of taking someone's money and then you know not being able to follow through so we had rejected that offer uh we then uh, when the family office uh, came to know that uh, i am i have you know left that startup and i i mean we are not no longer building it the way we were planning to and i might have some time at hand they approached me uh, to join them as someone who would be building or helping them build their own portfolio of startups uh, i mean the idea was that since i have experience of building startups now uh, however far i was able to take it it does count for something uh it seemed and uh, i also had experience of you know building up revenues etc in my previous avatar so i mean they brought me in uh, to help them build the portfolio for the family office and that really was i would say a turning point in my career because i literally found i feel my true calling uh, where you know i got an opportunity to interact with so many uh, interesting founders who are uh, an inspiring founders who are toiling day and night to build such interesting business models to build in spaces where nobody is uh, building and you know they're just not giving up and you know i got the opportunity to work with these founders and to help them achieve their goals one day at a time and i got an opportunity to work with so many of them on a day to day basis uh, help them grow etc so that really uh, you know uh inspired me uh and uh, i i never had to look back from there i mean after uh, helping this family office build this portfolio uh i was able to you know move on to fave c uh, which is uh, what we are talking about today uh and it was you know literally a step ahead in whatever is happening because as uh, the family office incubator we were able to help founders with words with advice maybe with connections maybe with some money that's about it and uh, i could see first hand that there are so many challenges that these uh, founders are facing in their early journey which cannot be solved by money which cannot be solved by you know just advice or mentorship it required more it required a uh, very close hand holding and maybe actually sitting beside them and working with them mm-hmm. uh, and that's what i found in fave c uh, i mean i was literally blown away when i uh, you know got to know about the business i mean whatever is happening whatever fave c is doing as a venture builder in the first place and i was like this is exactly what is missing in the ecosystem mm-hmm. and you know it was a no brainer to join hands and uh, start building uh, uh, you know start contributing to what fave c was actually of building and i was very fortunate that uh, when i joined we were just about starting off by you know building the 
uh, first check platform mm -hmm. uh, before that you know idea stage fundraising was really unheard of in the indian startup ecosystem except for maybe back in 2008 2010 when uh, startups had just started off and you know people were just putting in money on ideas post that post the ecosystem matured uh, i mean even today there are no uh, platforms that are enabling idea stage fundraising i mean obviously because it's too risky uh, but you know the way fcc operates it kind of brings the risk down even at such an early stage and it's a beautiful ecosystem that i got an opportunity to be a part of and uh, contribute towards so yeah i mean uh, sometimes you are able to turn around your darkest of times or your most difficult of times into you know something beautiful uh, so we should always i mean i feel that you know look not look down upon our failures but they are really really stepping stones to something better something greater so very well said and uh, really happy for your journey so far and i'm i know for a fact that there are greater heights to be achieved you know as we talk about the the moments that teach us i would love to transition this into my favorite part of the show that we call one line life lessons and i would love to hear some of your life lessons and uh, take that to our audience so there's this one thing that i uh, you know always tell people uh, that if you want to start up just start up i mean, don't have to think uh, too much i mean you just have to do and you know as you go ahead uh, challenges will come in and you'll find ways to overcome those challenges you just have to keep doing uh, and that's that's the most important thing True. unless you try you won't know what's possible what's not so please do and if you want to build a business uh, please start off and uh, you'll find your way mm -hmm. and uh, obviously we have you and if anyone has challenges they know where to go absolutely absolutely uh, i mean even uh, you know if you if you are not able to help people uh, via the ecosystem on a personal level as well uh, mm -hmm. i'm always always very happy to interact with people who are trying out new things and who are looking for support uh, of any kind to build those things because you know sometimes at our level we feel that uh, oh this is common sense everybody would know it but there are so many people who are starting out every day each day and you know it's the beginning of their journeys and maybe they have not had enough experiences to have that kind of learning as a common sense yet and you know uh, even the very basic of things can be very helpful for them so i mean i certainly believe that and i keep sharing i mean although sometimes i feel that you know i am being repetitive and i'm saying same things over and over again and this is so basic people would know it but you know then i tell myself that there could be a lot of people who are starting off today and who wouldn't know this so it's always to good to put it out and like uh, you rightly mentioned we're always there to help people uh, especially founders and uh, people looking to begin their angel investment journeys these two set of uh, stakeholders are very close to our hearts so always uh, there to help and support them yeah amika thank you so much for sharing your journey and your story and congratulations again on your many successes would love to stay in touch bring you back on with more of your success stories and uh, once again thanks for making the time to be with us today thank you thank you nitin the pleasure is all mine